Hello traders, this is another edition of Stradog's weekly videos and uh, like always this video will cover the bigger picture on the US indices and on the German DAX. So uh, this week will be marked with the US federal fund rate. Uh, expectation is that the rate is going down one notch. Earnings cycle continues. A, a lot, a big number of companies reporting this week also, and uh, we also have a full economic calendar. I will not read all of this, but uh, starting from Tuesday and Bank of Japan monetary policy statement and press conference, then we are going to Wednesday with the Chinese manufacturing PMI, and of course the event of the week and the event of the month is the FOMC statement, federal fund rate, and later FOMC press conference. And also we will have the NFP Friday, like always, the first Friday of the month will be the NFP Friday and unemployment rate. So even without the FOMC statement, we are having the full economic calendar. And uh, also earning reports in USA, most of these bigger companies already reported, but on Tuesday we will have the Apple in the after hours. Unlike the US, in Germany we will have uh, 10, uh, 10 DAX components, so 10 out of the, out of the 30 will report on, on Tuesday, 5 of them, uh, buyer as the uh, biggest one here, then on Thursday, BMW, Infineon, and Siemens is, is the biggest one. And on Friday, also Alliance and Vonovia. So uh, plenty of earnings, plenty of uh, news. And now uh, let's uh, go to the charts. So this is the S&P Cash Index uh, chart. And as uh, we can observe uh, here, uh, whenever we have such a situation like uh, this, a shallow pullback from the only... Uh, reference points that uh, we could use as a resistance that was this uh, trend line and uh, we had here a first test although we didn't get a touch of it touch of it we got now but whenever you have this kind of situation that uh, market is backing off from the resistance uh, and uh, come very close to it uh, we should really refer to it as a first uh, test so we got the first test of the resistance and a shallow pullback so uh, nothing much of a response here uh, uh, meaning that uh, we could likely get a break above this trend line um, nasdaq uh, looking uh, even more bullish uh, uh, we got a uh, good earnings report from uh, google a few days ago and um, also from Intel, from Starbucks, uh, and uh, all, several uh, FANG components already reported, Facebook, uh, Amazon, and the Google, and Netflix, uh, Microsoft already reported also. So uh, for the NASDAQ uh, and the entire market, uh, Apple earnings will be uh, really important because Apple uh, has a really big influence on NASDAQ being the component with more than 10% of index weighting in the NASDAQ 100. So those are the two uh, indices that are really strong, that are breaking um, above uh, the all-time highs, making new all-time highs and uh, pushing above these um, trend lines. And there comes Russell that is uh, lagging behind for many months, uh, doing uh, something like this, some kind of megaphone structure and uh, keep uh, being below this uh, here horizontal uh, resistance that comes about around uh, 1,600. And uh, here is the better chart than, uh, than mine. It is from Adam Mancini. I like to follow this trader on Twitter. Here, here is his chart of the IWM, which is a Russell ATF. And uh, he said on Twitter that uh, we are not going to get a good sell-off in the S&P until small caps do, which is why watching them is important. And I totally agree with that, because it is always important to watch what this Russell is doing, because Russell is often perceived as a risk proxy, as an index where you can uh, get a bigger bank for a buck, but uh, for many months, it is still lagging behind the, its all-time high. It's here in August, uh, made in August 2018. It is pretty away from it, while the 
Nasdaq and uh, S&P keeps pushing higher and uh, making new all-time highs. Now, this is what the uh, technical picture is looking like. Bullish scenario is uh, favored here. But the main question remains, this is the biggest news that we are going to have. Uh, FOMC statement and federal fund rates, as you can see here, forecasted one notch below. It is a 100% chance, it was last week, uh, that uh, the market will get that small um, rate cut. And now the question remains, could this event of getting that rate cut could be the sell the news event? Because by the rumor already is gone, that uh, kind of uh, rate cut should already be calculated into the price and market should, should really uh, focus on earnings and other fundamentals that are shrugged off because market is expecting a rate cut. Um, we shall see about that. Uh, the uh, thing that is uh, certain that uh, last week, this is last week starting from here. Previous week, we got it on two occasions on Wednesday and on Friday, liquidation breaks on US markets. But last week was pretty much all upside until Thursday. And on Thursday, we got the ECB press conference. And uh, before that main, main uh, refinancing rate, which remained the same. And then when Mario Draghi started to speak, Marky didn't like that at all because they didn't get the milk and cookies that were promised and they were expecting it to get uh, to get them sooner. And it was a big disappointment move on uh, German market, market and on European markets and it reflected also in the US market by this here. But later, as we can see, of course, um, US market shrugged that off Obviously, because it is a European news, while the European market is still lower, US market pushed higher on Friday and made a smallish marginal new all-time high. So, obviously, very bullish market. Uh, and uh, technically speaking, uh, when you again, when you have a thing like this, just shallow pullback that means likely a break above this line could be next uh, and now it is a very very hard thing to uh, do any kind of prediction what uh, the market will do when market is in this kind of phase when market is already starting to roll over making a false break above the previous all-time high and then they are starting to doing this on large time frames because this is daily chart when they start to doing this you know that after this there will be another big move and then you observe that they are testing and testing here this support that was here and then in this period of time it was an easy prediction that we are going to have another leg to the downside because the reasons that uh, was uh, that was behind this was still on and we got that but here now again nothing is uh, um, done on, in the field of US-China trade relationships and none of that is, um, is uh, nothing is happening there but market is focused on one and only thing and that is the rate cut so uh, European market didn't get the rate cut and it was promised from for September and we got some kind of knee-jerk reaction based on disappointment on that news but again, technically speaking, these charts remained bullish until proven not so. So uh, that is the situation on the uh, US markets. And now let's uh, observe German market a bit. Here is the DAX uh, daily chart. This is the CFD chart and um, completely the same picture we get on the futures chart also. And here we again get this kind of situation that daily 50, this blue one, this blue uh, moving average is daily simple moving average 50 acted here as a support together with the 1200 12200 uh, level and we got a good bounce followed by 
trend up day but then we got trend down day on a Thursday it is better to observe this on 240 minute chart so this was the market reaction on the ECB press conference on Thursday when Mario Draghi started to speak market expected uh, to get a rate cut sooner it was promised from for September and it was a big disappointment obviously disappointment led to this move below 460 we got a long liquidation of all of these buyers here that were late buyers and weekends who bought this previous uh, trend up day so uh, situation was clear while why we got this but uh, now uh, as we can observe on this chart this is uh, a lower high but between these two highs there is no uh, bearish divergence we have a higher low now again so market could spend more time here making a triangle going sideways because uh, german market will also wait for the uh, fomc statement and the uh, possibility of the rate cut but on german market situation is a bit different not only the german market as we can see uh, is a lagging market a market that lags for many many months if not years to the s p this is the uh, January 2018 all-time high on DAX but we will also get a 10 out of the 30 DAX components uh, reporting next week amongst them Bayer and Siemens is the biggest one so all of those earnings report can make a big impact on the DAX uh, price and when we observe the DAX cash index chart the here the most important things are these two gaps that price were uh, at one point very close to it but they didn't get to fill so this is here the situation from uh, july the fourth market came very close to fill this old gap from august last year Did, we didn't get to fill and this is the situation from thursday when market um, bounced from the 300 level but didn't fill this gap that was just 11 points below so in um, the case of market uh, going uh, back to this 300 level we could uh, uh, get that uh, fill and maybe uh, that would uh, serve as a false break of this level because this level here obviously now is uh, very important inflection point for DAX in breaking that to the downside would lead of course to here because there is only a uh, hundred point between these two lines and current eight year on DAX is around 130 to 140 points so this here is uh, not so much of a distance and 12,200 was already tested several times it is a very very important support for buyers so we shall see what is going on I am um, earnings uh, in Germany will have a big impact uh, to the DAX price also but all eyes on all uh, markets are now on the Fed is it going to be the sell the news event after they make a move and uh, lower the rate cut we shall see about that and uh, of course if you are interested in DAX uh, you can visit my uh, website here it is this is the home page of it uh, i'm running the daily dose of ducks which is a analytical and educational service for ducks uh, traders well i provide them uh, morning notes as a trading plan chart with uh, very precise zones and also educational recap videos and all sort of other uh, educational videos so that is it about uh, this uh, edition of um, weekly uh, videos it is now very hard to predict uh, the um, possible scenarios for the next week and uh, for trading we should uh, a stick to the support and resistance no zones that are already available on the chart and in my opinion just to follow the price uh, that's it i wish you a good weekend and good trading